And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris and I'm bringing you this lovely cryptocurrency video right here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, it is not early. It's actually 11.45 a.m. So a little bit of a late start today. Another crazy Monday out here. We're getting a bunch of rain. Anyways, let's get into some price action. Not to beat a dead horse here, guys, but I'm going to bring it up again. Uh, where is the bounce target? Uh, where do the bull traps and the bear traps come in? Right at the 0.5 and the 618. So I will continue to highlight this area and say as long as we're closing dailies below this box, I am expecting, uh, well, we got the first test of the 0.5 back to the 382. And, you know, could we get one more ping pong down? And then up again, boom, something like that. Or could we just snake around here and come up and tag that 618, maybe deviate above it and then back down. If you do see a strong rejection at the 618 and then more specifically a closure back below 42,708, which I believe, sorry, 42,500, that would initiate uh, the bear trap for me. And because the five day uh, bearish engulfing candle, which printed a few days ago, generally my bias is gonna to be to the downside as long as one, we were closing five days below 47,000. Two, um, as long as the momentum indicator, which actually has now moved up. So I was having another look at this over the weekend I, as I was training a few people and saying, look, uh, we do have the ability to have what's called a bullish reset, which is when the sti the, sti the stochastic goes down, but Bitcoin trades sideways. The daily just flipped down. That's not good. Um, going back to the five days. So as the stochastic resets and price action just trades sideways, that'd be what I'd call a bullish reset. And really what's gonna give us the next, you know, 30 to 40% move is the volatility indicator. As volatility begins to expand above 25%, that will tell us the move is headed off and the average move is gonna be somewhere around 40% on a five day volatility play. 40%, I would say as much as 80% um, and as low as 30%. So 40% in either direction. Um, again, the momentum indicator will give you the direction of this place. So you can see the pivot was 47,000. Now it's 45,500. So if we get a, a five day back above 45,500, which is probably going to be that 618, um, that would look good for the bulls. Momentum needs to flip back up alongside volatility expansion. That would look good, but 40% uh, would take you from where we're at today, 40% to the downside, actually gets you a little bit deeper, all the way down to 25,000, 24,000. And let's see where that's at in the grand scheme of things using our good old 618. That 618 is going to be coming in right here at 28,325. I do think that's probably the max downside. And I would look, that, look at that as a major buying opportunity. I don't personally think that that's, um, you know, and again, I forget about my opinion, right? Let's, let's read the chart. Right now, pressure's onto the downside as long as we're below 45, um, five on the five day time frame. Also, noticing the weekly time frame, putting in this massive little hammer that is a bullish sign so another point for the bulls there and momentum is steadily down and will remain down as long as we're below 47.3 um the other bullish reset reset scenario is similarly seen here so we saw basically as momentum flipped down on this here's a bullish reset momentum crosses down right here or call it right here, wherever you want to call it, right here, it crosses down and the stochastic comes all the way down and now we'll cross back up above $44,000. Uh, the three day has already flipped back to the upside. Another point for the bulls there, three days, a very powerful time frame, but volatility has not expanded yet. 
So um, this is what we want to see is as the stochastics coming down, Bitcoin trades sideways, which is essentially what has happened here. And then we get momentum flip back to the upside and volatility expansion. And that expansion to the upside, uh, we're talking about 40% to the upside from where we're at now. 40%. That takes you almost up to, yeah, 59,000 bucks. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be a treat if we got expansion to the upside? All the hopes for glory are going to be lying within the five-day volatility expansion. So let's keep an eye on this one for Mr. Bitcoin. Now let's check out Ethereum. Doing something similar here. To be fair, looking a little bit more bullish if you ask me. I am still looking for this move to play out back to 3,500. Um, you know, more importantly, as long as this pivot holds at about 1965, you know, I'd say, um, especially on a five day uh, daily time frame, you know, uh, volatility decreasing as we are almost bouncing off that green 55. I'm going to goose the odds in the favor of the bulls for a little bit more of a bounce on this one because it just had a weak bounce so far. So the strong bounces, the traps happen for Mr. Ethereum between the 0.5 and the 618. You're gonna hear me say that over and over and over and over because that's where it happens. That's where it happens. And goose in the odds in the favor of the bulls for this one to have a little bit of a bounce party into this box as long as Bitcoin doesn't get creamed and start breaking back below $40,000, that would not look good. I do want to check one more thing out for Ethereum. And that is our good old ETH Bitcoin pairing chart. And we did say, hey, look, not 0.5618 hanging out right here. We need to put in a higher low. And to me, this was a confirmed higher low. By closing above that wick right there. So as long as this one doesn't start closing dailies back below, not 0.5286, then I would suggest that uh, Ethereum does trudge its way onwards and upwards, making a little bit of an upside party. Now, if we do start to close by there, that's your first warning sign. Second warning sign would be any kind of a daily closure back below this last pivot. And I do believe we will come down to this green box, this vector candle coming in way back here. Uh, this last gnarly high volume vector candle. I, I, I maybe could move this down one more actually down maybe the four hours where I got that that vector candle which has not been recovered with price action. Let's see. Looking for a high volume candle right here on the four hour time frame, which to be fair, that's not super high volume. Um, this would be the first area for a bounce. Second area is going to be this candle down here. So let's let's. If that happens, I would be shocked. Honestly, I would be shocked if something like that happened. Uh, checking in on Nasdaq here. Nasdaq, Mr. Nasdaq here. Let's and then we'll take a look at Chainlink and uh, the potentials for Mr. Linky. And I think. We'll do some of your altcoins. If you guys got any requests down there in the live stream, feel free to drop them. I'll try and bull run will kick off when? Ah, good question. Is that Mr. Bieber in the house? Justin Bieber's here. Yes, sir. So good question. Uh, bull market has already kicked off in my book. And again, why is that? Well, the bull market typically starts 12 months before the halving. Additionally, we had uh, the macro reversal conditions met, which one of them being a weekly trend reversal. So you got the first higher low, higher high. That was a macro trend reversal. Nice one right there. Additionally, the hash ribbons indicator firing off. Uh, the monthly stokes crossing up. We have a whole video dedicated to like how to find a macro reversal. All the boxes were ticked off there. So Bull market already started, but as I told you earlier this year, Mr. Bieber, very likely what happens, uh, we get a shot up to the 618 and a 30% dump either before or after the halving. Before or after the halving. 
So we're 20% into this dump already. And unless we can get back above on the daily time frame, uh, or, or more specifically that uh, five day time frame back above 47,000, you know, you could front run it at 45,000, but conservative traders just wait for, you know, wait for a little bust up there and a higher low on the daily. And then you can target the top side of the range. I mean, all the way back at 59 and 69,000 bucks. So I think uh, for Bitcoin, you know, we are going to come back to this green vector candle, probably tag it right in the middle here with a little wick down at some point, 32.8 good good region some reason the price action either likes to fill the entire candle or the uh the middle of it which does line up with this prior support so here's what i would say after the having after the next major low is put in on the weekly time frame so what we want to see is a nice low established here or maybe bitcoin trades sideways and dumps it after the having but once that higher low on the weekly time frame is formed that's where you want to get your longs out. You want to put your shorts away, put on your long jeans and get, get in on that massive bull run. We are expecting Bitcoin to hit 250, somewhere I, I say 180 to 250,000. Why is that? Well, in every parabolic, you know, every, every macro bull market for Bitcoin, has resulted in a touch of the 4236 Fibonacci. And that's where your parabolic blow off tops happen. You know, on this chart, we're talking about 241,000. And that is the index chart. If we take a look at this chart right here, 241,000. Yeah, that's a nice, nice round number. Um, that's where the parabolic blow off tops happen. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret, Mr. Beaver. The last piece of the pie of the portfolio or the puzzle and calling these macro tops, well, statistically based, the macro tops do come in, do come in about 130 weeks after this uh, blue line. That is one year before the halving. Then you get 130 weeks of sideways and up. So where does 130 weeks take us? We're talking about um, 130 weeks right here. So somewhere between you know August, September of 2025 is where I would expect the next macro top to fall in line. And we have other indicators that tell us, hey, it's time, it's time to let your coins go. So make sure you follow our YouTube channel and subscribe, tickle the bell, let everybody know you're part of the team and you'll get notified when we think a macro reversal is going to be taking place. All right, let's take a look at uh, Chainlink here. Chainlink, I wanna take a look at Mr. Stinky Linky, which is just a silly name. And to be fair, I was looking for a little bit more uh, downside action. Got You can't be right on everything, that's for sure. But um, I'm looking at this as a breakout. Why? The weekly time frame, more specifically, closing above this wick. And really, as long as we're above 17 bucks, I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm gonna give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto, but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101 how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto trader's dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. I'm looking to get long and strong on this one. After a little short-term pullback is fine, maybe down here. You know, maybe retest the breakout one more time would look good for me. We did have the breakout and retest on the hourly time frame. What does that look like on the four hour time frame? 
So we did come back and test this wick over here as support, made a little double bottom and party back onto the upside. So the question is, when does it stop? Or where does it stop more importantly? And here is my, you know, my overall target for this one all year long. Uh, this was the first target, which was met. Second target is 28, 28 bucks uh, from where we're at today. And, you know, probably, probably gonna make some new all time highs. Um, alongside Bitcoin making new all-time highs. Uh, let's take a look at Mr. Tao. So yeah, this one is good, uh, good to go. As long as we don't break back below the range on the daily time frame, which is gonna be, uh, call it this level right here. You know, we don't see any daily closures back below 16, call it 1650. The line in the sand for Mr. Link, uh, that would invalidate the trade and uh, you know, what happens when you pop back into the range, you go back to the bottom side of the range and maybe we do tag this vector candle one more time. We, we got into it, but not deep enough, um, if you ask me. So, but this one tends to go. And if we just look at what happened on the last time this happened, we had a big consolidation here, right? Big consolidation. Bang closes above, has a quick retest on the daily time frame, and pretty much a clean shot up to the. Well, first stop is always the one six one eight. Then you got the two six one eight, and a nice clean shot there. And you notice that bearish divergence really caught that one pretty good here. Um, so you see these three highs. You see these three red lines marking off the highs right there. Higher high, higher high. But what was the RSI doing during this whole time? Lower high, lower high. And three shots get you a, a drive to the bottom side of the range. And now I'm glad I'm looking this at, at this with you guys. Very, very glad because as long as the RSI is below this pivot, you're gonna have another drive of bearish divergence. Um, we're back in the bullish control zone. Volatility is expanding. It looks like this one wants to send. And really, you could put a stop loss right here at 17 bucks. Honestly, it's time to load up on some of these linkies. After the next, I would say the next um, higher low on the four hour time frame, which does not look like it's coming anytime soon. Matter of fact, we'll cross down on the next four hour closure below $19.08. So could provide some entry time. You're gonna see bearish divergence right there. Price is making a higher high, but the RSI is making a lower high and some would call that three drives, one, two, three. Even one for maybe coming back from over here. No. So call it one, two, three drives. I'm looking for a move down to the 21. Time to get short first. And as long as we don't close below these guys right here, yeah, I would, I would expect some more upside. Thank you guys for bringing that to my attention uh, very much. I very much appreciate it. Uh, what other interesting coins are on the board? We did Ethereum, we did Bitcoin. Neutron, one of my favorites, just getting slaughtered here getting slaughtered but that's okay after a massive run like this we just don't want to see an inverted head and shoulders by closing back below this guy on the daily time frame i think it is a little bit more uh, i'm not going to call that a head and shoulders but the trend was broken and it looks like it does want to revisit this area right here and as long as we don't take out this wick here at 75 cents then it looks Good for some more onwards and upwards for Mr. Neutron. Uh, just wanna see now a daily trend reversal, right? And we got the lower high and the lower low. Almost, almost a lower low. So still has a chance to fight and get back and reverse, but um, I would say that depends a lot on Bitcoin and what Bitcoin does. All this, Although this one has traded fairly different. All right, I think, um, Suey looks like it just wants to keep going. Declining volatility on the daily time frame. Momentum crosses back up above 155 today. So 
you know, I would like to see this one come down first, but um, no telling what this one is going to do. And I think I'm going to leave you guys with that. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.